Hello and welcome to our online classes. Now in this video, uh, this is the first video in a series of lectures on the topic of macroeconomics. Now the objective of keeping the topic of macroeconomics uh, in this course is that to understand how the stock market works, you need to have a brief idea of how the macroeconomic system works and the various concepts in macroeconomics, okay? So for example, you need to understand what is GDP and what does GDP growth mean and what impact does it have on an economy. Uh, you need to understand what is inflation. So there are several of these concepts that you need to understand before you become a stock market expert. Now before we get into the various concepts in the uh, topic of macroeconomics, I want you to have a, a brief idea or a holistic idea of how the economic system is shaped. I want you to be able to answer the question of how does the economy work, okay? Now, to understand how the economy works, you need to be able to uh, you know, first identify the players in an economic system, okay? So, for example, let us con consider a country A, okay? Like a country like India. To understand how the economic system in country A works, we need to first uh, recognize the players in an economic system. So, who are the players in an economic system? Well, the three most important players or agents in an economic system are the governments, the households and citizens, the people who are living in that country, okay, and finally the firms, businesses and corporates. Now mind you, when I say businesses, firms and corporates, I don't just mean companies or factories or corporations. I mean any entity or institution or organization or even individual who is producing a certain goods or a service of economic value. What I mean to say is that farmers who produce uh, you know, crops or, or food items, they're also a part of this group that is highlighted here on your screen. Doctors, teachers who aren't exactly companies, but they're also a part of this group here because they're producing a certain service of economic value. Okay, so you need to realize that. So now we have established the three key players in an economic system, right? Let me now introduce you the fourth key player in an economic system, and it is the financial system. Okay, the financial system, if you have seen my uh, first uh, lecture series on capital markets and primary markets, I had explained there that the financial system is an important uh, facilitator of flow of capital. Okay, For any economy, capital or credit is vital for its growth, for its, uh, you know, for, for its growth, and the financial system enables capital to flow from institutions or individuals who have excess capital to institutions or individuals who have who are in need of capital immediately okay so the financial system is at the heart of any economic system that's why it's at the middle of the th these three players okay sorry now the next let's now let us now introduce the fifth player in an economic system the fifth player in an economic system are central banks okay Central banks. Now, the central banks play a very key role in an economy. Okay, Money is a very important instrument in an economic system. In modern economies, money is a very important instrument. Central banks in every country are an autonomous institution who are mandated by uh, the governments to control the amount of money that is flowing in the entire system, okay? So they basically control the money supply. The amount of money that this that needs to be printed, the amount of money that is flowing in the system 
is controlled by the central bank, right? So these are the five key players of an economic system. Now that we have established the players of an economic system, we now need to understand the relationship between these players, okay? Now when you look at these players in an economic system or the agents in an economic system, it should be easy for you to understand that it is this group, the businesses, the firms and the corporates or, or, the, or any individual which is producing something of economic value is the group which produces something in an economy. They are the producers, okay? Now, whatever they produced, produce is consumed by the people who are living in the country, the households and the citizens, and by the governments, okay? So, the households and the citizens, they consume what is produced by the businesses, the firms and the corporates. So do the governments. The governments, they spend money, uh, for example, uh, like building roads. The government is going to look for a contractor which builds roads and will pay the contractor to build roads, uh, to create buildings and etc. etc. So this group produces something for the economy and it is consumed by the governments and the households and the citizens, right? Now, where does the labor come for these people, for this group, of, uh, for this group to produce something? It is, of course, provided by the households and the citizens, okay? So the households and the citizens, they provide labor to the businesses, the firms and the corporates and in turn earn a certain income from uh, the, this group of people, okay? Now, the businesses, the firms and the corporates, they're producing something which they're selling uh, to the governments and the households. That means they earn money via that, okay? So they make certain profits. The households, the citizens, the households and citizens, they also earn income from the services that they're providing, the wages that they're getting for the labor that they provide. And that is also uh, the governments, they tax these two entities to earn money, okay? So the businesses, the firms and the corporates, they provide tax as corporate tax or uh, other such the service taxes and other such taxes. The income, the households and the citizens, they pay income taxes to the governments. So that's how the households and the citizens and the business uh, and the businesses are linked to the government, okay? Taxes are is the source of revenue for governments. The final element that I, the final relationship that I have want to introduce is of government transfers or government benefits. Now, in any society or in any economy or in any democracy, the people of any particular country, the citizens, they elect governments whereby they uh, mandate the governments or they trans give the governments the responsibility to run the country, okay? Now, the running the country will def definitely need money, and the governments raise that money by taxing the, the uh, institutions and the people, right? With this tax, the government, of course, pays for the administration of the country, pays for the po process of policy making and making the laws of any particular country. But the governments also look after the people or the underprivileged in any uh, society. They have also have some responsibility towards the people that they are governing or the country that they're administrating, okay? So they provide this service or this benefit to the people via government transfers. Examples of government transfers are uh, social welfare schemes or benefit schemes or subsidies or investment in, uh, in human development, for example, uh, providing free healthcare to the citizens, providing free education to the citizens. So all this forms, falls under the government transfers. This is how the government transfers its resources to the citizens and the households, okay? Now, now we have established the economic system, system of any particular country, A. Now let us finally introduce the last element in any economic system, which is the, our relationship or our business relationship with the rest of the world. As a major country, as, as a large country like India, we obviously engage in international trading, whereby we export and import uh, goods and services to other countries, okay? 
So this is the, the entire economic system, right? Whatever concept what we are going to talk about in the subject of, of macroeconomics will be a part of this system. Let me show you what are the concepts that we are going to cover in this topic of, in the subject of macroeconomics. We are basically going to cover GDP, inflation, deficits, policies, and demographics. We're going to explain these concepts to you in the future videos. Now, let me give you a brief idea of each of these topics, each of these topics that we are going to cover in future videos. What is GDP? Well, GDP is actually a short form for gross domestic product. It basically measures the total value of the goods and services produced by any particular country. So basically, it's measuring the total value of output produced by these guys that is highlighted on your screen. Okay. The next topic that we're going to cover is inflation. What is inflation? Well, as I have said, central banks play a very important role in an economy whereby they control the money supply. You need to understand that money supply has a very close relationship with prices in an economy. Okay, If the money supply in any economy grows very high, then the prices of the goods and services is likely to increase. Right? So, Inflation basically measures the price levels of goods and services. So when we are going to talk about inflation, we will show you what exactly it means and what role central banks play in controlling inflation in a country. Okay. The next thing that we are going to talk about is deficits. Now deficits, as the word suggests, is some kind of a shortage, right? There are basically two kinds of shortages. One is the shortage of money by governments, that is called fiscal deficit, and the shortage of deficit in our export-import uh, area. So that is called trade deficit. If we import more than we export, then we are paying more money to the rest of the world than what we are receiving. Okay, So if the value of our imports is greater than the value of exports, we're actually paying money to the rest of the world. So that's a trade deficit, and it is closely related to something called current account deficit. So we will cover the two deficits in this uh, subject of macroeconomics. The next thing is policies. Now, when we say policies, we mean the, the, uh, the rules or the guidelines or the decisions that governments take in running the country, okay, in framing the laws of the country and the decisions that the central banks take in controlling the money supply in the country, which in effect controls the price levels in the country. So we're going to talk about policies. Finally, we're going to talk about demographics. Well, what is demographics? Undoubtedly, the most important constituent or part of any economic system or any country are its people. It's the citizens who are the most crucial part of any economic system. A country without any people is not going to produce anything, of course. Okay, So demographics tries to look at the condition of the people in any society or in any country. Okay, By looking at the demographics, we can make certain assumptions of what this entire economy is going to do in the near term. For example, India is a very young country. That means the average age of Indians is very low. Now, this is extremely beneficial. This is going to be extremely beneficial in the long run. That means because we have a lot of people to provide labor. And with lots of labor, we will most likely produce lots of goods and services. This section will produce lots of goods and services. So with lots of goods and services to produce, the people of this country will have lots to consume. OK, so this is in a way beneficial. So we will look at that aspect of an economic system, of a macroeconomic system, when we talk about demographics. I hope this introductory course or this introductory lecture has been informative. I will keep coming back to this diagram when I'm explaining future concepts or the concepts which I have listed on this side of the screen.
Till then, goodbye, good luck.